the gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Bacon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and it's my first time in the committee, so it's uh, good to be part of the subcommittee. It's an honor. I'm glad to have you. I'm a retired 30-year uh, Air Force guy, uh, signals intelligence, and worked a little bit in cyber, and one thing I took away from that is we have some of the best cyber capabilities in the world, particularly in the intelligence and the offensive side, but we also have the most vulnerabilities, and I, which you are working that part of it, so th thank you for what you're doing. I heard a, one of our senior generals say once that we have the biggest rocks, we also live in the largest glass house when it comes to cyber, so we two-edged sword there, right? Uh, Mr. Mossberg, I, I know you talk a little bit about hygiene or uh, the right cyber hygiene. Could you just talk a little more succinctly, what does that really mean and where are we at in getting to that proper hygiene? Sure, I think, uh, and I first referenced it with regard to phase one and, and the, the focus on what, what is on individual networks. Mm -hmm. and, and after creating a, a master device record and an inventory of the assets that exist on the network, um, a rigorous, constant patching of that software and maintaining the proper configuration is that hygiene. And so we're well into phase one, but as I think in earlier responses, not complete. We don't have that complete inventory yet. Um, but we, you heard some of the responses here a second ago with even some of the more recent um, issues and attacks that we have encountered from WannaCry to some of the recent hardware attacks. Our agencies were better prepared because of the upgrade one, the patching that was occurring, the hygiene that was occurring on the devices that had been identified, but also the data that had been collected for even when those, those devices weren't yet being patched or having the proper hygiene applied to them, we at least knew about them. And then the agencies could prioritize their reaction to addressing them and prevent those, those attacks from, from causing harm. And you're having to do that with all 24 federal agencies? Yes, that all 24 will roll through the, the phase one. And do you have a, is, it, is the software that you're using, is it the same for all 24? Because I think that would be pretty challenging. Well, and I think the goal of the, the CDM program is to have a common approach in these. Right. Quite honestly, uh, CGI is engaged in phase two in the credential management. Uh, mm -hmm. I defer to the vendors that are rolling out uh, phase one on the specifics there. If I can make a comment about that, Congressman Megan. Um, at the end of the day, one of the challenges for a lot of the primes, um, taking the dashboard, deploying it within respective agencies, but to your question, lots of different technologies that are used by a lot of different agencies. So I think that was one of the complicated elements of what CDM was trying to tackle was leveraging it was our, what was already out there, augmenting what was there, and putting into best practice and use all of those to deal with a master device record, being able to populate it, have accurate information there. And so that's been a big challenge, I think, for a lot of the, uh, the uh, prime contractors. And some of these countries are so advanced in this area. It just takes one device that we have not had the patch for to find a vulnerability in. Would you agree with that statement? Yes, sir, I would. Mr. Kiriannis, uh, what is the federal enterprise in develop, where is the federal enterprise in developing their CDM dashboards from your perspective? Are the barriers to fully implementing and using the dashboard technical or is it administrative? Um, I would basically say that I think it is a combination of the two. Uh, so we have worked very hard to stay as close as we can with DHS, with the Dashboard Prime, as well as the Prime contractors working within the agencies. Uh, we're learning a lot of what people need to, the Dashboard to be able to do at the agency level as well as at the federal level. We've been augmenting our software on an ongoing basis. We have a release schedule at least twice a year. And the idea around that is to continue to add additional components, upgrades, enhancements to our software to enable them to progress and to do more work, uh, the work that they need to do to uh, drive CDM to success. I appreciate your challenge. You know, coming from the Air Force, we try to do a dashboard. That was hard enough for the Air Force because you have different major commands underneath it, airlift, fighter, space. So you're, but this dashboard you're building is going to be a one-size-fits-all for all 24 agencies. So the uh, current architected approach, and I think it's the right one, I made that uh, comment in my opening remarks, one of the uh, key elements mm -hmm. of this is having consistency from right. a dashboard tool uh, across the entire uh, agency that level dashboards and at the federal mm -hmm. level. Having consistency, having DHS maintain that consistent approach ensures that you're seeing similar information types, risk scores, et cetera, rolling up to the agency and to the federal level. Um, if you didn't do that, 
you have everybody doing something slightly different to your very point about right. within the DOD environment. You know, you start seeing a lot of apples and oranges and lots of different variations. So consistency is paramount in our judgment from a dashboard perspective to its CDM program success. I just think with all the different missions, that's a challenge because everybody has a different mission area and different unique requirements. Uh, but yet I understand you got to standardize if you want to be able to defend the system better. So uh, I had some more questions, but I, I, my time is out. Thank you for your expertise and thank you for your service. Thank you, sir.